hundreds of people have been evacuated from their homes as torrential rain causes severe flooding across England. A major instance being declared in Nottinghamshire, where the rising waters of the River Trent flooded more than 100 properties. Elsewhere, train lines in some areas have been brought to a near standstill because of water on the tracks. Great Western Railway says there will be disruption until the end of the day. Joining me now is meteorologist Jim Dale. Jim, I would love you to give us some good news and tell us that it's all going to be fine tomorrow and you know, things are, are looking brighter. Can you do that? I can I can probably do that, Daisy. Good afternoon to you. Uh, nearly evening. Um, yeah, look, I think we're over the worst. We've got um, we've got over the rains of the last few days, and and it's been a real incredibly wet uh, December, followed by an even more incredibly wet start to January. Uh, somebody left the taps on somewhere, and the bath has overflowed in various places. And sadly, it's affected um, many homes, many businesses and transport uh, uh, with it as well. But yeah, I can give you some good news. And, th and that is the rain is uh, draining away, moving away. Uh, and we're going to get some high pressure, um, which means a couple of things. First of all, no more rain, so no more floods. And I'll guarantee that for the next, maybe even the next 15, 20 days. We'll see how that one goes. But that's as, as far as I can take it, as far as the uh, models are concerned. It looks that way. But the second thing, yeah, you can probably feel it in the air already. It's turned that a little bit colder. And, and that cold weather will bring uh, some icy mornings, some frosty mornings and nights as well as, as time goes on. So I think we get got to get back used to scraping the uh, ice off cars and that sort of stuff. Um, and Jim, maybe we've presumably, missed that. Maybe. So, sorry to interrupt you, but Jim, presumably that very cold weather hitting very, very soggy ground... Um, might be pretty treacherous. Yeah, I think it will initially. Um, I mean, I've got to say there will be a very, you know, in time, and I'm talking about the next two, three, four days, what you're seeing on the screen here, these these very high levels of, of river water flowing into villages and towns, that should subside. It, it, it always will be the case. It takes a, a legacy to get rid, and, and we're in that now, and give it another two, three, four days, and we should be coming out of it. But you're, you're dead right. The, the ground is absolutely sudden. But I went for a, a walk in the woods this afternoon. I, I wouldn't dare to do it when Storm Ank was there. And I noticed just massive trees down with the, with the winds as well. And, and not just that, but the roots, you could tell there was nothing to grip to. The, the, the ground was sodden. And that's where I am. And that's not the worst affected area here in Iwickham. So, um, yeah, I think the recovery is on the way, thankfully. Um, but as I say, it's a t case of looking at the ice. And going forward from there, Daisy, um, Maybe a case, and and look, we're battling over this at this moment in time. Or at least the models are. Whether or not we start to see what's happening in Scandinavia coming in our direction by way of snow, and I'm not talking yet. I am talking maybe 10, 12 days time. We've got to keep an eye on it. Uh, Scandinavia, extremely frigid, cold up there, freezing temperatures, minus 40 odd in northern Sweden and Finland. Uh, and snowbound as well. So that might be the next thing we're going to be starting to look out for. And we're so famously good at dealing with snow, Jim, aren't we? Well, well, we'll have to leave it there with you, Jim, but thank you very much. Okay. So some respite, uh, but maybe some freezing fog coming too. But if you're flooded, what should you do? Let's speak to Mary Longdono, a flood resilience expert. Um, through bitter experience of your own, I think, Mary, you're known as, as Flood Mary because uh, you've been there, done there, got the T-shirt. That's absolutely true. And uh, 1,700 properties as of this morning have been flooded and are going through what I went through. And my heart absolutely goes out to them. Um, so, Mary, if you um, either have been flooded or think that you potentially could be flooded, give us some top tips of what to do. Right, OK, we'll start with you might be flooded. A lot of people have flood protection products, so flood doors, flood barriers, self-closing air bricks, toilet bungs, non-return valve. Fit them now. If you haven't, sandbags do not work. I've tested them and four sandbags failed in 59 seconds and 10 in under two minutes. So if you're absolutely desperate, get some wide gaffer tape and fit that up your doors and brush your air bricks and fit the gaffer tape over your air bricks. Now I did test that as well and it held the water out for a good length of time. And when it did leak, um, 
somebody pulled the tape off and the water burst through so it will carry on holding the water back even if it's leaking it's really important that you move your car to a place of safety and make take all your precious belongings upstairs and then think about moving stuff you can put your table legs in buckets or plastic bins or vases even or even a pair of, a pair of wellington boots and put things on top of the table if you've got decorators trestles put your sofas on on the decorators trestles and put chairs on top and tie your your curtains up and put them out of harm's way but most importantly turn your electricity and gas off and stay safe and listen to the emergency services. My goodness now, me, Mary, that is a, that's a huge long list of things to do, incredibly useful. Um, but also what struck me when you were reeling off all those things to do is how much hard work uh, that is. That's some heavy lifting to do. And, you know, if you presumably, you know, if you're a bit older, if you're not that able-bodied, you know, if you've got young children who are looking after you're going to struggle to get your house prepared in that way that you describe. You absolutely do. And that's why you have to sign up for a free environment agency flood warning. It will give you time to move your stuff, call in your neighbours or relatives and even get your children involved in taking their precious toys upstairs, say. But if you want to lift stuff, if you've got a plank of wood, stick it under something like your Welsh dresser and stand on it and that will lift your furniture up and you can perhaps pop some bricks underneath it to lift it up but never try to do things by yourself but the most important thing is really to move your your precious mementos granny's photo and her no longer with us and things that really matter to and, you and mary what about there. those those people who have already been flooded i mean we've we see these heartbreaking photos and interviews all the time of, of the devastation that's caused. Presumably, they're straight on the phone to their insurance companies. Given how frequent this flooding has now happened, are insurance companies being more difficult than they used to be? No, in fact, then they're, they're not. Um, I've worked very closely with the insurance industry and there is a, a government um, backed insurance scheme called Flood Re. And they have just brought something in called Build Back Better. Now, most of the big insurers are signed up to it and they will give you an extra up to an extra £10,000 on top of your insurance claim to fit flood doors or self-closing air bricks, etc. Or my preferred choice, uh, waterproof plaster. You can even get flood resilient kitchens. So if you do get flooded again, you can just wash that kitchen down and use it again and wash the walls down. You won't have to have all your plaster knocked off. Now, I have written a flood recovery guide and it will talk people through the bleak, their first bleak days after being flooded. It's a very practical guide and it's a free download on my website, which is floodmary.com. And I know from talking to people that have used it, that they're finding it extremely useful because when you're in times of stress, your mind turns to spaghetti and you don't know what to do or how to do it. Absolutely. But the flood recovery guide will actually hold your hand and help you through it. All right. Well, Mary, that's fantastic advice. That's Flood Mary. Have a look on her website if you have been flooded, if you think you might be flooded and get all those top tips. Um, and that was a flood of top tips from Mary. So many thanks to her. Yeah. Uh -huh.